This presentation will be discussing embankment slope stability, um, chapter D5 of best practices. So assessing the likelihood of slope instability, which may or may not lead to a dam or levee breach, um, requires consideration of the full plausible range of soil behavior and the relative likelihood of different types of behavior, which may vary with time and rate of loading. So the objectives of this chapter are to understand slope stability issues that may affect or a dam or levee's risk of breach, and provide guidance on consideration and selection of soil strengths, pore pressures, and loading conditions for slope stability analysis um, for risk assessments. So some key concepts that we'll be covering are um, formational processes, stress history, and or um, the current state of stress, um, and whether it affects um, how dense and stiff um, a soil is or how loose and soft a soil is. Um, another concept is that dense and overconsolidated soils dilate and loose and normally consolidated soils contract during shear. Um, and then the drainage condition is a function of the permeability of the soil and the rate of shear loading, and it dictates what kind of analysis um, should be done. So for drain strength, we use the effective stress approach. Um, for undrained strengths, we use the total stress approach. And then negative or positive shear induced um, pore pressures can develop dependent on the drainage condition and they can also increase or decrease the soil's effective strength. So some USACE um, slope instability issues have been um, primarily associated with during construction and end of construction conditions. Um, we've had a few dams that have had issues on sunny days or during sudden drawdown conditions, but our levees have had more serious issues that have occurred from during construction all the way to flood loading conditions. Um, and a prime example of this is New Orleans, which um, we'll discuss in a little bit more detail um, later on. Um, and then Reclamation has had um, a few instability issues as well on some of their dams. So one of the best examples of slope instability issues in our inventory was the slope failure that occurred during construction at Fort Peck Dam in 1938. The surface area of the slide was about 160 acres um, and there were about 180 workers um, with miscellaneous construction equipment that had been working in or near the area um, of the slide. Um, luckily, the construction engineer was one of the, the ones um, that were able to escape um, as the driver was able to back off of the slide um, just in time. Um, so this photo um, shows the slide looking more directly toward the right abutment um, and you can see a couple of drag lines ended up about where the yellow marker is um, on the slide um, and then also note how the slide appears to pivot about the right abutment. Um, the the volume of the slide is significant. Um, it's about it was about five million cubic yards, um, which is a bit more than the entire volume of the concrete in Hoover Dam um, completed a couple years earlier. So some key information for doing proper embankment slope stability analysis um, that we want to keep in mind is your shear strength assumptions, um, the geometry and geology the stresses, and also the pore pressures. Um, some typical slope instability triggers um, include rainfall infiltration from cracks or pore drainage at the crest, um, removal of the toe support, either from erosion or excavation, um, surcharge loading at the crest or foundation, uh, rapid drawdown condition, changes in seepage or groundwater, um, excavations, and any other conditions that would change the vertical or horizontal stresses. So the objective of these next few slides is to show how we evaluate strength change with time and also loading conditions. So here for case one, we have the end of construction um, scenario. So for low permeability soils, you want to use the minimum normally consolidated undrained strength assumptions and for free draining soil conditions, um, use the drain strengths. 
For case two, we're looking at a sudden drawdown scenario. So for free draining soil conditions, again, we would use the drain strengths. Um, and then for the low permeability soil conditions, um, we would use a three stage computation where the first stage uses effective stresses. The second stage uses undrained strengths and total stresses. And then the third stage uses drain strengths or undrained strengths, depending on which is lower. And this will vary along the slip surface. And then for case three, we are looking at a flood loading scenario. So similar to the other two cases, um, drain strengths are used for the free draining soil conditions, um, but for the low permeability soils, wet of critical with an over consolidated ratio less than two to four, um, we would use the undrained strengths. And for low permeability soils dry of critical with an over consolidated ratio greater than two to four, we would use the drain strengths. And then for seismic loading, um, we would want to reference ER 1806 um, for, for that guidance. So these slides more specifically outline and reiterate what was illustrated in the figures in the previous three slides um, with regard to shear strength and poor water assumption, poor water pressure assumptions um, in, in the context of the loading conditions and material type. Um, so you can see the free draining soils are highlighted in blue um, and the low permeability, permeability soils highlighted in red um, with a caveat of when to use drain strengths for those low permeability soils, um, both for your end of construction and sudden drawdown. And same for your flood loading, um, what, when, and how to use those different um, shear strengths and pore water pressure assumptions, depending on the material. So we can't discuss um, slope instability without discussing the catastrophic breaches that occurred throughout the New Orleans Parish um, during Hurricane Katrina. And for this presentation, specifically the 17th Street um, Canal breach, which was attributed to embankment um, and eyewall instability. So post Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, an interagency performance evaluation task force, also known as IPET, was deployed to perform a forensic analysis of how the system performed under the loads subjected by the hurricane in order to better understand why certain structures failed catastrophically and others didn't. Um, so one key takeaway from this was that um, undrained strength controls for soft wet of critical conditions. So there were some key differences observed between the strengths assumed for design um, and the strengths estimated by the IPET model along the slip surface. So as you can see in the plot on the left, um, the solid line highlighted orange defines the original design strength assumptions. And then the red dashed line um, defines the strength profile beneath the center line from the IPET model. Um, and you can see that it matches closely with design at depth. However, as you move out toward the toe, um, the design strengths were much higher than the IPET model strengths, which explains why um, we saw the performance that we did at this location. Um, the, the, the structure wasn't designed to account for those lower strengths out toward the toe of the levee. So some major sources of uncertainty that we want to consider in slope stability analysis are in situ large scale shear strengths versus lab testing results um, and the limitations there, and also long term strength mischaracterization and how strength changes over time, um, and then actual pore pressures versus predicted or assumed for analysis. So jumping over to another case history um, is the Dallas floodway. Um, so this photo is from the 1990 flood and um, the system has had some performance issues that factored into the evaluation of slope and slope stability and um, the risk assessment for the system. So this is a more recent photo showing the, the project in relation to the city. Um, and you can see how densely populated 
the area is behind the levees. Um, so the growth in this area has been substantial um, over a relatively short amount of time. So this has a direct correlation with the current level of risk associated with this system. So there were a couple contributing factors to slope instability for the system. Um, first was the occurrence of embankment slides, both on the river side due to sudden drawdown and on the land side due to excessive rainfall. So in spring of 2007, um, there were storm events that saturated the levees following an extended dry period. Um, several levee embankment slides developed um, throughout the system in under 72 hours. Um, the floodway was monitored using the, the Dallas PD air support and ground surveillance and unfortunately temporary repair efforts from the levee crest were not successful. Um, another contributing factor um, to instability issues at the system was encroachments. Um, so on November 30th, 2010, a um, leaking 48 inch water main that crossed over the levee caused a slide, um, a pretty significant slide. Um, and this line was thought to be abandoned per the available use space design and construction documents. Um, the deteriorated valves um, in this line could not be completely shut off um, to restrict flow, so um, repairs were made with partial flow. And this prompted USACE and the City of Dallas to evaluate um, similar, similar utilities um, throughout the rest of the system to determine the appropriate mitigation solution. So these performance issues um, highlight the fact um, that perform or that penetrations of our levees create significant vulnerabilities that we must manage and um, thoroughly evaluate. 